Well, I was going back through the archives and looking at the body of work that I have created on my YouTube channel. And, um, you know, one of the things that struck me, and I, I, I obviously find this interesting, and I'm surprised I don't talk more about it, but it, it was this video down here. Um, well, where did it go? The Purpose of Life. And I was thinking about it, I watched a little bit of it, and you know, my views have, have held, they've held up on this. You know, I reserve the right to change my opinion and stuff as new information or new thinking comes in. And so uh, this is holding up pretty well. And I just wanted to kind of go through that real quick. And this is a comforting thought. I, I really like the view that I have right now. You know, it's convenient, but it's very helpful to me. And so, um, it's basically, you know, I was thinking about, you know, humanity, physical, you know, the physical world, the terrarium in which we live. And, and back then I was sort of making an argument. I was talking about angels and spirits, and I don't know if they exist. I can't prove anything. But let's say they do, and I was thinking, you know, what, what is it that people can do that angels or spirits cannot do? Because I was like, why, why do they even bother you know, uh, getting involved, assuming they do. I've never met one, so I have no idea. But I was like thinking, what, what, what is it that we have or we can do? And, and the answer was very simply, we can die. We're able to die. We can die. They can't. And I'm like, oh, that, that gives us a really big advantage in some regard. And the, uh, the thinking goes like this, like if you're, if you're a spirit, you know, you, you don't have to deal with death 24-7, always like lurking around the corner. You know, there's no Grim Reaper for you. And, um, you know, you're also never able to like really help your fellow spirit. You know, they're in a jam, you know, they're, they're stuck in a burning car or whatever. You can't, as a spirit, in my opinion, you know, uh, put your own self at risk in order to help someone else, another spirit. And I'm like, well, that's the key. That's the whole point. That's the purpose of life. You know, we, we, we come into this terrarium with our, our flesh and bone. You know, we're, th this is not us. This is, this is just the machine that we're driving. We're somewhere else and in control. And it seems like this is us, but it's just the car that we drive. It's just the machine that we operate. And so I was just thinking, it, it just seems very obvious that the whole purpose of life is to learn one thing. One simple thing. And that's how, how to sacrifice, how to give up yourself, how to place other people uh, above you and how, you know, to watch your own life, the own significance of your life diminish while the lives of everybody around you uh, is elevated. You know, and, it, and it's part of the model. It's like you can't help but learn this very basic lesson based on, you know, on life itself. For instance, we're, we're born... You're a baby. You're very, very self-centered as a baby. You know, everything's about you. You scream when you want to eat. Diaper. You know, just 100% of your life is about you. And then as you get older, you start to learn to share and stuff like that. But then eventually, <clears throat> more, more likely than not, you become a parent. And now the roles are reversed. You know, you went from this selfish creature where the world, you know, the world's all about you. And then you became a parent, and suddenly your life is gone. You gave it away. You know, you, you, the midnight feedings, everything. You know, I mean, think about it. Like, we can just go to the extreme. What parent, and I, I know there's exceptions, but what parent wouldn't, in a heartbeat, give up his own life or her own life to save the life of his child? What parent? I mean, yeah, there are exceptions. I understand that. But in general, you know, you go anywhere in the world, you go to Japan, go to you know, Australia, whatever. And that's just the way it is. You know, parents all around the world get that. You know, I'm just my life is irrelevant right now. If I can save my child, I'll do it in a second. And then you see it in other things too. And again, I'm going to the nth degree, giving up your whole life so that somebody else can live. You know, people crawling into burning wreckage, even soldiers on the battlefield. And I know that I talk about war in sort of a different tone but it's like this lesson permeates the system. This lesson where you, uh, you learn 
and you accept that you know somebody else is more important than me. No matter no matter what they they throw at us, you know the the system controllers, or I should call them the hijackers. You know they try to like uh, for whatever reason I don't I don't quite understand, but they don't want you to learn that lesson. Let's just say, and so they you know want to destroy it all. But even in the in all the chaos and all the you know the chaos that's going on, it's like these little lessons are just they're just, they just they're abundant. The opportunities, let's say, to, to learn this lesson, they just they, that that can't be eradicated. You know, I guess I guess it really could be. I should say, this is interesting. You know, the only way to really eradicate that self-centeredness, or to prevent the lesson from being learned, would be to sort of lull the population into a slumber, into a lazy. Uh, self-centered slumber where you're seeking entertainment you know you're just sort of numb you know and then and then you're inside so the opportunities to be out you know in the in the dangers of the world and let's face it I mean even if you're on the highway you know there there there's potential risk all the time you know then you road rage anytime you're mingling with society opportunity comes up for you to sort of diminish yourself I'm gonna check my temper here the guy cut me off yeah, yeah, hey, I'm going to practice a little restra- Maybe this guy's having a bad day. But if you're sitting in your home all day watching Netflix or watching YouTube, you know, that lesson is harder to practice. It's harder to come by. But that's sort of a different topic. I was just sort of, I wanted to go back and revisit my theory on the purpose of life. And that would be, you know, to learn how to diminish in your own view, you know, yourself, while everybody else uh, increases their worth, their value, even people you don't like, that ought to be part of it. Hey, uh, they're they're. I don't like them. I don't like how they wronged me, but nevertheless, that's part of the journey. I need to get past myself and my anger and my my sense of of justice. What I you know that's not fair. No, it's not, but that's just the way it is. More than likely, these other people that wronged you, they don't really know the meaning. They haven't considered the purpose. They're just living because they think this is all there is to it. When I don't think that's the case at all. You know, I was thinking about, we're born, you know, you have parents, your parents had parents, you know, your parents' parents had parents, blah, blah, blah. You know, it goes on and on and on, you know. But people are, are, are mortal. They, they, they're not immortal. So a human being or, or any animal, you know, has a beginning and an end. And so it had to have had an initial beginning. I mean, you can throw the whole evolution. I just can't accept that. It's just so silly. The point is there had to have been a starting point. And therefore, there had to have been something outside the, the terrarium that created it. It's just logical, in my opinion, that something created it, something got it going. Whether this thing created two people or all the people or a million people at one, I don't know. I don't really care. But I get the impression that there was a time, maybe if time even existed, that all the people were in their spirit forms. And there was like a meeting. You know, and the uh, and the offer was put out there, hey, in the spirit realm we're limited. We can't learn certain things. You can't learn how to sacrifice, number one. You can't learn how to persevere. You can't learn to overcome the challenge, you know, to pick yourself up by the bootstraps. You know what I mean? Suck it up. Keep going. You know, I know you're tired, but, you know, you got to you gotta endure. You got to develop an inner strength. And with my wide knowledge of the spirit realm, which is sarcasm, sarcasm, I don't know about the, 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 the spirit realm, but it would just seem to me these opportunities would be limited or even non-existent. You know, if you lived in a spiritual realm and you're a spirit and you're impervious to pain and suffering and death and all that, there's really not a whole lot of uh, opportunity to grow, you know, to develop that intestinal fortitude. These things can only be developed in the, in the physical realm where death stalks you 24-7, yet somehow you still get up out of bed and, and go and, and, and do it and do whatever's got to be done take care of the kids or whatever you know death lurking at any minute any minute yeah you still well you know I mean I mean think about it at, at any minute your entire existence could be just gone every last vestige of you gone 
instantly, car accident, piano fell out of the sky, whatever. At any second, yet we still we still get on with it. We still get up and, and, and get out of bed. I was like, you would think if with death staring everyone in the face, we would just lay in bed all day worried. We'd be just terrified, but we're not. I mean, I know that a lot of us are afraid of death. I'd like to think I'm not, but maybe I'll answer that question when I'm laying on my deathbed. If I have that opportunity, I mean, who knows? Maybe, you know, you just get, get run over. You know, a truck hits you from from the back, so you never really get the opportunity to, you know, to be afraid. But I'll be able to answer that question on my when I'm taking my last breath or when I'm getting close. How scared am I? Maybe I'll be afraid. I'm, I'm thinking right now I'm not. I'll be like, I, you know, it, it was all temporary to begin with. I, I understand. I'm, I'm at peace with it all something we'll deal with later. But my point is, human beings are still out and about doing things and, uh, you know, they they, they don't think about it. And that's encouraging, you know. I know everyone's sort of locked in and, you know, with the whole, you know, the whole thing going on and that, that's a whole other issue. But, you know, just getting back to the basics here. What is the point of life? Journey, the challenge, it's a test you're here to learn something, in my opinion. I'm here to learn something. And what am I here to learn? I'm here to learn those characteristics that I couldn't otherwise learn in the spirit realm. Oh, I was talking about we're all at this meeting, all these spirits, right? And I would imagine, in my, in my view, you volunteer. And maybe everyone would volunteer as a spirit. I don't know. But you volunteer, yeah. Hey, you're going to go in. We're going to send you into that, that machine, which is the flesh. And, and you're going to be born into the world. And you're going to have no recollection of this meeting. But the reason you're going in is because you're going to learn something. You're going to learn all those attributes that we can't learn in this spiritual realm. And then you're going to take that with you. You know, learning how to persevere, sacrifice, all that, that wisdom. You're going to take that back into the spiritual realm where there is no death. But you'll be a more, I don't want to say advanced, but you'll be better as a spirit that understands those things as opposed to a spirit that never had to encounter or deal with those kinds of things. So it just seems to me it's just one, it's just one big test, and it's a lifelong test. You, know, you don't learn it one day. This is key. This is probably where I would sort of uh, add to this video here. You don't just learn it one day. It's a process of, of life. Like You never master it. Maybe. I mean, I can't speak for every. I can speak for me. You know, am I better than I was years ago? I would say yes. I would say that I'm better at it now. I'm a little bit more patient, a little bit more compassionate maybe. A little bit more, eh, eh hey, it's all right. Don't get me wrong. I have my moments. They are not few and far in between, but... I think in general, I'm sort of better, uh, better at, at, at bearing it out and living it. And as you get older and older and wiser and get thicker skin, thicker skin, you know, you just become better at it. So you have all this time to practice it. So I guess the key is to learn it. You have that aha moment. Huh, life, you know, what is the point here? And then you have a whole lifetime to practice it and get and get good at it. You know, and so I, I, obviously there's going to be varying degrees. Some people probably never learn the light, the lesson. And I don't know what happens to them. Maybe it's hell, damnation, lake of fire, or maybe they just do it again. I don't know. And this got me thinking about the, um, all the opposition. You know, you, you, you hear about like these, like, um, or these malevolent spirit. Maybe they're all just playing a part. You know what I mean? Like in the spirit realm, is there evil? It's like I've always been a little suspicious of the story of Satan, Lucifer, you know, falling from heaven. Like if you were like a spirit with that vast knowledge and understanding, like what, what would possess you to think like you're going to take over or you're going to be like, why would you even have selfish ambition? It's like, it doesn't make any sense to me unless you're playing a part, unless you're like, you know, you're doing the script. Like the whole thing is set up, not just the terrarium of earth, but you know, all, all the other players, you know, the, the bad guys. You know, maybe they're just playing a role here. Just following the script, you know, creating the system or, or maintaining the system's integrity 
to help you find the path. And, so, and you know, the question I, I, I more recently would ask is, why do things seem to be getting worse and worse and worse more quickly? I mean, there could be no doubt. I mean, am I biased on that? Has it always been screwed up? Yeah, maybe, but it just seems to me that it's like escalating much worse. But maybe it's not. Maybe it's just the same. You know, it's just the um, the corrupt aspect of, of, of the system. It's just always been that way. It's no more, no less. It just That's just the way it is. It's designed. It has to be corrupt in order to... Because if it was all perfect here, then you wouldn't be looking at the journey or you, you wouldn't have the chance to persevere. It would be all great. Hey, everything's great. There's nothing to learn here, right? Let me go uh, swimming in the beautiful ocean. So maybe it's, it's not deteriorating faster. Maybe it just looks that way because I see it more. It's just so obvious. You know what I mean? That's pretty good. I, I just came up with that as I was yammering on, just talking. It just looks like it's getting worse. Like these, these politicians look more ridiculous than ever. Maybe they're not. Maybe, um, no, they are. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, they are. But my point is, my, my, I think my point is still valid. It just looks more crazy because, um, I mean, you, you see all the unrest going on now. But that was like in the 60s, right? Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and all that. Hasn't that always been going on? I mean, the politicians today, yeah, I mean, I guess they're a little bit more, you know, they're just sort of a mirror of, of society, really, you might say. You know, we got a reality TV star. So in that regard, I guess things could be worse. But in general, maybe, maybe it's all just the same. And it just looks worse because... Um, those of us who see it getting more ridiculous, you know, you're just a little bit more cued in. You just sort of like, uh, yeah, you see it more often because you're looking. You because you can't help but see it. I mean, now I just can't help it. It's like, I just it's just everywhere. It's just so obvious to me. But maybe that's because I like to think that I'm awake, and I, I hesitate saying that because it's sometimes maybe that gets you into a false sense of security. But but anyway. I should have had some notes. I think I think I pretty much covered everything I wanted to talk about. It's all just a test. It's all just a journey. You live, you die. You learn the lessons. You take them with you. And then uh, who knows? Who knows what happens then? But what I like about it is it sort of gives me like comfort. You know, like uh, I, I've read a couple comments recently. Last couple, I don't know, maybe last month. I haven't been making a lot of videos lately because I had to go back to work. But don't worry, that's ending soon. I, <laughs> soon I'll have more time to make videos. But, you know, there's, like, concern, you know, about, you know, dying and stuff like that. And uh, I, I get that. I do. I mean, I, as I mentioned, I, I, you know, my parents passed over the last year. And I had a lot of deep conversations before they went. I had that chance. And it was really, it was really powerful to see how they could, like, they weren't afraid. They just weren't at all. None. Zero. Zero concern. Yeah, yeah, they were worried about I want to watch your kids grow up da 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 but as far as themselves and these weren't religious people by no means okay these were not church going god fearing good christian no 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 these were you know blue collar you know regular people that just just had zero concern it wasn't like they had a death wish or anything they just it's like they saw it they understood you know oh this nonsense oh you know whatever I had a good run it was a good journey you know, and uh, you know, they they were like, they did, they both they thanked me for being part of the journey with them, which I thought was um, it was really touching. You know, they were thanking me for being part of the journey. That was powerful. That was something I never would have even considered I would experience. You know, someone like that just, you know, it's like you know, thanks, mom and dad for being a great mom. And now they were thanking me. Little do they know <laughs> what I was up to. Yeah, they knew, especially you know when I was young. Anyway. That's it. We'll leave it at that. The end.